video, I'm going to discuss when to use which way to fuse the compost so I will get the best out of both methods. And I will use Gen 12 bolt as a demonstration using these methods. One of the best parts is I have good control of the heat, therefore I will not overheat it as if I were using a heat gun. What that means is there's less emission coming out, the films coming out from the coal first when it's overheated. Then I look into the manufacturer's web page and see if those emissions are toxic or not. And it turned out that according to the manufacturers, it's a very safe kind of product compared to other plastics. As for PVC pipe, there may be some dangerous toxins being emitted if it were overheated, but not with this uh, corpus. Many things coming out are just CO, uh, carbon monoxide. Anyway, I usually do that in an open air or well ventilated space. Now they are where the respirator to. It's better to be safe than sorry later. I would say the new fusion method has only two types of joints, which I would call here as a complested joint and a non-complested joint. A complested joint is the one that I will apply force during heat fusion so that both layers will be melted and fused and complested together. This will result in a solid sheet of plastic at the joint. The look of both surfaces will not be very nice, but the joint itself hopefully will be watertight, and that is what I am after. With non-complested joint, I will keep one surface of the fused corpus stay intact and smooth. The other side is fused as being shown here. If I build a Gen 12 kayak with two sheets of 4 feet by 8 feet corpus, I will create two sections. In the middle, I will use the compressed joint to make a larger sheet. I will try to overlap the sheets for at least 6 inches. With the iron, we will create a fused joint of 4 inches wide. This joint will most likely create a better watertight joint. I will cover the joint with Gorilla Tape just in case there's water leakage through the joint. At the bow and at the stern of the kayak, I folded the edge of the corpus and create pockets where I inserted the PVC cross beams into the pocket. When I fused the corpus to make the pockets using heat gun, the uneven heat distribution caused the warping of the wall of the kayak. You can see this in the video. Similar warpage appeared at other parts of the kayak. If I apply the non-compressed fusing method, this uneven heat distribution can be avoided and the bow should look much better. When I built the gunnel, I folded the corpus to embed the PVC pipe. I cut the corpus in three sections because it is difficult to make one continuous fused joint with a heat gun. With the new compressed joint, I can do a continuous joint without the cuts. This will make the inner part of the side wall much smoother. I used a single 6mm thick corpus as the floor. I fused the stoppers on the edge of the kayak. The stopper is to prevent the floor from shifting. I will use the non-compressed joint to do that. I fold the corpus to create a smooth gunnel edge. This will make the wall thicker 
and stronger. I will also use the non-compressed joint to prevent the sidewall from warping. For the bow and stern, I attached a triangular shaped coroplast, and this is for optimizing the waterline of the kayak. I still prefer the old method. The joint is created by overlapping the jointed coroplast for about 1 to 2 inches. I can easily get this done using a heat gun. I align the edges side by side and then run hot air to both pieces at the same time. Then I flip and place it on top of the other sheet as if I'm trying to glue both sheets together. I press the heart on the joint and let it cool. This process is quick and easy to do. In my next video, I will discuss the limitations of both kinds of fusion method and will tell you what to avoid when you build a boat so you will come up with a nice boat. If you find this information useful, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, so that you will be notified when I upload the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.